All right, well, we're going to get started as we'll go back to 12. I'm not the guy that brings the 12 to 10. Let's everybody just go up. Hey, I came out of education and coaching. <laughs> so when the bell rang, my door was shut. And if you weren't there, then you were talking. So uh, if you weren't on the floor when the practice started, you didn't practice. Kind of what I want to say. Thank you the same way. My name is Michael Oldham. Uh, this is my beautiful wife, Amy, over here for talking to the Chet Uh We are the Oldham team. Uh, which means it's me and her and a bunch of vendors. Runs our, runs our business. That is the old team. Um, we are broken by EXP. Uh, started with Kelly Williams, was there for five years, and then the last few years we've been with EXP. Um, but that's not why we're here today. Um, any and all of information is right here. If you need to reach out to us, our cards are also back there. If you can grab one, um, both of our numbers are on here. Our website. Both of our emails, we pride ourselves on being a resource for people who might not know all the answers, probably don't. Uh, every real estate transaction is different, but we are willing to try to help, try to find the answers. Amy was in mortgage for over 20 years, so she has a lot of knowledge. I've been in real estate now eight years, uh, so no, we don't know everything. We do probably know where to find the answers. So if you're somebody that needs something in a like that, you can't find the answer, we'll be more than happy to help you. A quick overview of what our lunch and learns are, why I'm hosting these. Uh, like I said, I was a high school basketball coach. I ended my career at the King North, uh, coaching the girls basketball team there. Uh, this particular picture, you probably wonder why there's a girls basketball team. This was the greatest bunch of collaborators that I've ever worked with. Uh, 12, young, 12 young women put all their individualisms to the side and came together. That picture was taken in Austin, Texas at the state final. Uh, we didn't win it, but we got there. So my goal for these market learners is basically the same thing. I want to put a bunch of people together to collaborate. This industry is changing uh, daily. <laughs> Um, it's changing quickly with the technology that's coming along. When the pandemic hit, it boosted everything probably 10 years into the future with technology. So I'm trying to stay on top of that. I'm trying to collaborate with other people that are looking to do those same things that realizes it's changing and want to be in front of that. This lovely room is sponsored by Catwalk Mortgage or Home Loans. Chris Madrid is a representative. Uh, Chris and I met. Basically, I said I've been in real estate for eight years. Chris was the, one of the first people I met uh, in the KW office, actually. Um, he's helped mentor me. He's helped with most of our loans that we've done. I want to make one here real quick, give a quick mortgage update um, because I think it's important to stay on top of these things for our clients. So I'm gonna let him take a few minutes. Awesome. <laughs> so does anybody anyone know this? Oh, okay. Besides the internal thing. Uh, so it, it's a quarter back here because this will be a lot of the daily hourly basis. Um hasn't eaten a whole lot other than green is good, red is bad, right? This is this this was this morning. So we saw a, a little downturn in rates. So if you have some that you work with, just make sure they can get this um, from a market. Um, so the, the, this is where we are tool and, and kind of tells us like, hey, if you have clients that's closing in a new construction, closing in 60 days, 30 days, 15 days, we're going to, to kind of watch this, look at the text and see if we need to protect which tricks now or we can take that road. So this has really been super helpful. Um, rates right now just on average on a 30-year basis up this week, rather than check. We have another slide here. Yeah, so the trades this week are up so on average a 30 year basis 6.54, 15 year uh, 5.75, jumbo, FHA, VA are still sub, uh, sub 6% interest rate. Um, interest rates overall are headed down, just not in a straight line, right? We got a uh, CPI report that came out today and it wasn't as friendly to the markets as we were hoping. So that's why we've seen interest rates tick back up. But um, overall, um, rates are such a such a big thing right now, right? In November, we saw the interest rates almost hit eight percent. The market had like pretty much stalled out. Um, in January, I've seen that the applications 
essentially no, I think I took more applications a day than I did November 2025. And so things are looking up, which is great. Um, but again, it's just it's kind of the data, um, day to day. Um, if you have any questions on the market, on what's going on, uh, I'm happy to help. I send out a weekly, uh, kind of a, a real short newsletter, quick to the point. It'll kind of give you the kind of high level stuff. It's not at all putting this all there, right? It's kind of high level stuff. So you can be educated about it. So, any questions at all? I'm always going to do this. It's from my office. We're here to serve. Thank you guys. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. If you don't have a lender, if you're looking for one, if you just want to talk to somebody else, Chris is great. Um, he watches the market just like a stockbroker watches the stock market. So he can basically tell you by the minute if this is the best time to walk in those types of things. Today's lunch sponsor is Capital Title. Um, <laughs> if you go ahead and bring the cohort and let them come up and Talk to you real quick about the services they can offer. <laughs> I've been using uh, Capital Title for Brittany for a little over a year now. So, come on. Thank you. 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 Thank so we want to be an extension of your business. We want to help you save money. We want to help you save time. That's the way you can make loyalty. It's just something you really would like to do. We want to earn it. We want to talk to you, sit down with you, learn about you, your business, and tell me what your business plan is. If you don't have a business plan, we'll make one. So if you want to um, let me know what your goal is, I can tell you how we can help you achieve it. Chris is great at lenders, great business partners. If you don't have different business partners to help you pay for certain events, maybe you're trying to do buyer seminars, maybe you're trying to do client gifts, appreciation stuff. I'd love to sit down with you and talk to you about how we can help you do that. We can help create top buys, we can help create with house buyers, we can help you with all your marketing and branding. So if you want to get together, I'd love to sit down and talk to you about that. We also have training rooms like this. So if you want to host your buyer seminar for your clients or even networking thing. Or something to help your downline, or anything that you're working on that supports your business, let me know if you have something that you're interested in and help you get there. Again, if you're not selling, we're not selling. We have postcards for you. So when you close with us, it's not going to buy or sell side. $56 for 100 postcards. We create it, we stamp it, we mail it, we farm it out, we send it. If you're interested in farming, you can help pull those farming lists. We have a guy named Joe Herrera who you actually work with soon. He teaches classes. You can do right now MLS Touch, Canva, Matrix, Remind. You're paying for Remind and Matrix as part of your real produce. But no one actually teaches you how to use the programs. So I'd love to have someone sit down with you. He could do a Zoom. He could meet you out um, at one of our offices or he can meet you here, whatever is better and closer to your location, which is another amazing thing at Capital Time. We have 104 offices, whatever is in the easiest location, Dallas, Plano, Frisco. You can always work with Brittany. She'll work the contract, just put whatever address in the office you'd like to close in with Brittany's information, and she can make sure to have you close anywhere. You can also drop off earnest money to Rockwall and then they'll overnight it to Frisco. That way, you're not driving all over the metro because if you want to save your time. Um, right now, market is changing. So, we are arguing for global closing type of companies. Ours is not. We are not targeting because our third party, we don't use a third party company. Our mobile closers work for Apple Title. So I promise you they know how to close. They've done it before. Mm -hmm. They are speakers. So they're traveling. Traveling is like a lot of actually. Um, they're already on twelve turning three for the majority of us. If you need any help with that, we have commercial, we're in the commercial, we're the commercial department at Target and Toy, which is where our plant is. So we own our own. Underwriter, so if one person may not love how you work in the deal, they might not get to choose from. So we're going to try to push clothes no matter what. And I'll let you add if you want us to close your strategies. So I'm Rick Ford, I'm an escrow officer. Right now we're at Paul Park. We're looking at a beautiful new location at Frisco Station. We're going to do some really um, forward thinking things there to help you all in your digital marketing side of the business. Um, I know that's a quick thing for agents, so I'm like, hey, Social media is where it's at, and, and how do we make that happen? 
that's something that we're going to be very forward thinking about and providing that for you all. So my team and I work together to make you all shine at the closing table. It is very important to me to make sure that everything goes excellently from the beginning of when you get that earnest money to the very end of that closing table, because that's how you all get your referrals and you all shine. And so that's something that we pride ourselves in and just being excellent. We would love the opportunity to work with you and your clients and you know your friends. Yeah, I would talk to business card by the pizza and also hanging out here. So if you have any questions, just let me know after and we'll chat with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Real quick, uh, is that Henry Mitchell? Put Henry Mitchell in here. Oh, Suddenly, suddenly, she appeared. All right. All right. Today's presenter is going to be Jason Northcutt. Uh, Jason and I were in the KW Bristol office together several years ago, is how we met. Um, he is the founder and realtor at North Realty Group. He is with Broker by EXP. He is what we call an icon agent. Uh, do you want to explain that, Jason, or you want me to? If you don't know what an icon agent is, and we've done a lot of business uh, with EXP, the way EXP is brokered, you do pay a cap like most brokers. But once you do 20 transactions after that cap, they give you your cap back. So Jason earned his cap back and basically runs his business on a very small footprint financially. <laughs> Um, he's an army veteran, he's a photographer, he's a broadcast journalist. Uh, you'll you'll get the feeling from him when he comes up to talk, and he's obviously very educated in land. I'm very excited to have him here today. And he and I go to him often when we have land deals to run questions by him. Maybe we're just maybe we think we know the answer, but in real estate, you don't need to think about anything. You need to know. Right. So whenever uh, you're talking to a client about a piece of land, you want to really know what you're talking about. So he's been a good reference for us. So I'm going to let him come up and do this thing. How's everybody today? Good. All right. So um, I tell Michael how um, to the day he may not ever have to speak again. So, um, and Michael, really, I appreciate you spending an opportunity with us. And also, Chris and Becca, you guys have worked with them. Uh, I'm all people to partner with. Um, I partnered up with Apple College very early on in my business. And they, 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 sometimes we're going to have a problem with you. Okay, that's what they deal with. So, um, Mike, it's okay. I'm, I know we're here talking about things, right? But can I get personal with you for a second? Tell you about who I know? So Michael did a great job. Let me tell you a little bit. I'm 47 years old. And uh, I've got a lot in my life, right? I grew up pretty poor, worked up the middle class in my family, went in the military, or did right? And fast forward, I you know, spent 13 years as a loan officer. And in 2014, lost my father, hit me pretty hard, dropped out of the mortgage business for a few months, went back in the mortgage business, met the love of my life, I'm married to now. And later that year in 2015, or my mother was sick. She drove her cancer. I lost my mother in 2015. Why is that important? Why am I sharing this? Because we're on, if right now, let me ask you, raise your hand. Who's stressed? Who's, who's still in the market? We all are, right? So whether we raise our hands or not, at some point or another, we realize, holy crap, I share my stress. It's freaking all. Starting to cramp back up and have a game really stress. I know I am. We still do a lot of business, but I'm just... So the reason I wanted to share that is this. Lost my father, lost my mother. I came out of age in 2016. I didn't have 2016, I thought I addressed it. I just didn't. The business that I wanted to grow in 16 wasn't there. Didn't renew my license. Went inactive from the beginning of 17, about April. So my fiance, now she's my wife. I had time. I told her, I said, I know we can make this. So I went a little less, a little less of the head savings for my license. From April to the last half of 2017, did it over four months. Simply saw me get married, 
Another two weeks after 2018, honeymoon. 2018 is 2019. Got a wild hair. I don't think I'm on a broker. I'm on brokerage. So did about 8 million in 19, 2000, almost 2020, did um, about the same, 8 to 10 million. 2020, about the same, 21, 20, yeah, 21, I did 14 in line for the first time. But the reason I share that is because don't, don't look at it. Yes, I, we've had great success, but it's stressful right now. It's okay to fail. If you believe in yourself and push yourself forward, you will succeed. There's no doubt. In I just want to share that with you so you guys understand where I'm coming from. So, land. Uh, Russell asked me, goes, How in the world did you get into land? Of all things, right? Because most everybody here knows where they're going to end up somewhere. Land for me, I do um, north of 100 transactions a year. That's all I do. I do maybe two or three times. But land is what I do. So, it came from Facebook. Two people that I work with right now, work with in the past, work with now, I found on Facebook. First one was, hey, we need someone to help us take some land we're dividing up. We need someone to help us listen to this. Never met a person, so I'm on a network group on Facebook. I'm the only one to call them. I found them where they were, found them where they were taking it. That night, we signed their two weeks. But there are different subgroups. Fast forward, they got their license, our relationship phased out. Only well, makes sense, right? Your license probably doesn't mean. Me. Well, about 2019, right when I opened my brokerage, I got a space for some reason. I need some help. A lot of people said, hey, call Jason. I'll reach out to him. Fast forward from 19 till now. And we, so our relationship from 19 till now, we probably both more than 300. I don't buy leads. The advertising that I do is usually to generate interest in our property. I think those buyers are going to be I just don't know what to buy. I don't have time. Our buyers, I just don't have time. So, land, selling land. Who here thinks it's easy? <laughs> Good answer. So, you know, I was up a lot of times. I have to. There we go. Land in a. So it literally is not as easy as you think it is. So today I want to talk a little bit about some of the high overview of what we do to get land sold, kind of from the beginning to the end. And then of course I want this to be very interactive. Ask questions. So I'm gonna be the only for talk, please. <laughs> so um so let's talk land. So that's me. As I said, kind of, you know, typically it's easier to talk. So there's when you think of land. Okay, first of all, when we think of land around here, you think of this person a lot, right? So you think of five or six. Well, you got to remember within land, there's different types of land. I'm going to go into all of them, but the main ones are areas like ag, rural, or yes, uh, urban transit. So, first of all, ag. Ag does not mean the same thing as ag. It's an exemption, it's a tax for. What's well, going to be tax for and uh, identification? Agricultural land is land that's being farmed. Literally, they're making it. It's corn, cotton, cattle, beef, whatever. They're turning it into that agriculture. Now, rural, which goes around this, right? Which leads them to urban transition. What was once rural, Oxford and Salina, and some of them, is now moving into the digital residential or urban. But rural is usually could be used both for agricultural or it could be five to 15 acres, it could be 100 acres, but it's predominantly not something that someone's out there making money on. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, the other things we'll cover is uh, ID market analysis, some of the pitfalls of land, and then some of the soil techniques. Um, we are kind of covered ag land, rural, urban. Any questions on that? That's pretty self explanatory to start. So everybody understands it's an urban and animal, right? We are in an urban environment, prosper. It's strange as it sounds, prosper is not real. <laughs> Think about six years ago, the only thing that was being built out there was the what's it, subdivision right across the street. I think it was the only one on the larger lots. There were kind of only ones really building across. 
Yeah, I'm not saying like it's being built out as well, but before the 14th, probably the 14th. October is all the time, so it's still kind of old. The green's not anymore. <laughs> so, you know, we always make a joke, you know, all this thing is like, so you understand why I do it because I have anything to work with, anything to work with. So, but any questions on this? Any characteristics you want to have? <clears throat> I know Texas got a lot of the land is not totally such a like unrezoned land. You know, uh, is this the only one of those urban transition? So we can also work recreational land and agricultural or urban transition. That's what it's called recreational land. Uh, the other thing called timber. I just want to do that like, probably in the first grade. But and for recreational land, it's typically just that. It's not something that's going to be local. You really can't grow anything on it. How else do I know I want to do it? How about the uh, cattle? So cattle would be under more like an agriculture because they're, they're using cattle to uh, prove an animal, right? Right. So using your agricultural farms and you're doing cattle, we're talking large acres. Now, with that said, how many cases are there around? Right? Well, it's a cattle, right? So you still have cattle on smaller tracts of land, but when, I think you may be talking about like larger, um, you're looking at 150, 200,000, 500,000. Which is cattle. So, and their specific land would fall more into agricultural land because the people that have the cows out there with companies is an income producing activity. Versus mm -hmm. having an active production plan of cattle. Does that make sense? But to your point, right, you know, land is not buildable. Right. It could fall under like agricultural, but it could also uh, fall under recreation. It's for hunting. Um, it may have a three or four acre pond or actually you know, tank on there and they go fishing on this. Some of those other. A good example was that was my grandparents grew up on the Red River. Up in Sibyl's Den, which is where the mosque was, which is probably the brand name. So I was going to get up on this later. Um, but it was on the river. And you really can't develop. I mean, there's a house, you have a well, you have a set thing. The rest of the time, there's a well cabin. And then as your kid, it was going out there to trot mining, which you don't have trot mining, it's 100 foot people training and stuff about it. Five days. That's what we call it. So, <laughs> three days of just having fun, and, you know. Uh, so, does that make more sense, though? Yeah, just, I, I thought about starting some new questions. No, no, I want you to ask questions, right, please. Everybody, you know, you know, there's a question. This is in my mind. Yeah, there's, you know, 10 years ago, we started going through the retreat. Yeah. So, almost. But 500 acre land just for a church on the street. Yeah. And they do have building in there. Um, it doesn't belong to religious or it's not or, or, or in, uh, you know, what do you call that? It's in the same category as. So, really, what you're being at that point is really what I'm talking about in cultural land because we do, even on top of the do, it's a market. Does that make sense? It's the church that's using it for, like, for example, we used to go to Camp Arrow and down with us. Every summer we spent a week looking at there. Same same concept, huge amount of land, you have girls dorm, boys dorm, the tabernacle in the middle of the middle. I'm driving the church. Now we get less than the church. But anyway, uh, that was being more like I'd say more. It's not really what I would deem as like a commercial use like this, but it's still somewhat of a commercial use like this. Like recreation or is it recreational or religious use? So but I know a lot of the church camps, they don't always during the summer, they may be for the churches, but sometimes they use those places out for retreats. Um, you know, so that makes sense. Yeah, you know, the question. Yes. Yeah. Well, it depends on the so you have what's called a tax land capacity. So many acres of what community you want for. So if you have one acre, you really don't have to spend a heavy cow out hours may do. So it's it's gonna be based on capacity at that point. Does that make sense? So uh you can literally go out and do what's called a poverty farm. Uh, you can buy 15, 20, 30, 40 acres and turn a portion of a poverty farm, which is hobby H O B B Y. So you do a hobby farm. I I'm I'm from Texas, by the way, so I mean, sometimes I do kind of 
know, now, 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 you're here more than 80 or something. Yeah, pretty cool with my last music. It's been a lot of time in Illinois. There's a bill from 20 Illinois that was more than 80 years out of the United States. It did not south of 80, like none of the farmland, soy cows, and that did. Or they even Chicago and whatever. So, uh, but by the way, there's a bill here now. I haven't gone to it yet. I want to know. I, I want, it's not going to be the same. I didn't wait, I didn't pull them for you, but anyway. So, um, hobby farm. So, um, you can have a small amount of acre that's not considered an ag property. It's still rural, but you can still get members. So, it could be cow, it could be farms, it could be crops, it could be um, a good example, though, that I would still say they're under an ag would be. Um, Mine's on like uh, Maine, right here on the cutter. Uh, they do uh, retreats and uh, oh, they have horses. And so they use a lot, of, bring a lot of veterans in, they do a lot of the outreach for them. They help them do horses for being out in nature. So, yes, they are agricultural, but you could say they're still kind of under that rule because they're not huge, 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 huge large amounts of anybody now. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I was saying, so let's say uh, the destination is the third, but like what that? Yeah. Uh, uh, what about? So it it could be it could be very small. It would be, but I would probably put that in more under rural because everything is specifically agricultural use for like I said, large amounts of crops, large mm -hmm. cattle, large chicken farms. So it's going to go out and do a property match. Yeah. It's probably, I would only try that more rural property, uh -huh. even though it's, it isn't producing a, you know, a year round. But if you have horses on those properties, they're still property. Depending on what they're doing with them, I still put it under this. But remember, I'm not going to go back to this earlier. So don't confuse ag with an ag extension. Two different things. Uh -huh. Okay, so because an ag extension is a tax base for the ag land. It's not like a uh, big thing, uh, the long ago where they had long, small horses. I know that for a very last part of it. I mean, country wide, two thousand three. I think they need time to try. Now, the great example of transitional, and I'm going back to like Prosper, okay? Prosper was very rural ag. Anything north of 380 for a long time, I saw the opinion. I live in the Kennedy Court of Oaks. That was only two years. Just put that in back your mind for a second. This would be more of an ag, maybe ag. Then it slowly went into a transitional phase of where it started building. Now they're massively different, right? So you have Prosper, who that has a small footprint. Prosper down the street, but I say when I say Prosper, the city of commercial residents of the people. So I they're pushing west uh, pricing, right? So those are that's what I would call a transition. We're going from that ag land, which is not very producing, to bringing farms. So it's those last spot for bringing from, right? They went from an ag to the rural. Now they're going to work. That makes more sense. Mm -hmm. okay. And when they and when they expand from like rural to both energy or ag. Great question. So that's why I say there's always going to be the separation in my extension versus what ag anymore. So I, here's a great example Texas passed a law years and years ago that in order to be ag extension, they have to finish the work. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's ag land, rural. If it's you can have 10 acres in the middle of Oxford and still have an ID, then you can use tax. Now, you want to put a ranch in a ranch, not ranch. <laughs> that's that's what I'm trying to sell it. Uh, a ranch. I told you on some text side, and when I was going to broadcast and talk about Baltimore, and my teacher looked at me and said, Do you speak any word without having any sort of trouble flying? <laughs> and so they only made fun of me, so I had to go, oh, holy shit. So I'm going to try to talk about the law. Well, hey, I don't know what that means. It's your accent. 
Um, what was the question? Hang Sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, on county, we do pilot. Most people don't know that. There's only a handful of counties that allow that. Uh, on Austin, and there's a lot of other. So, how do you do that? It's less than 10 acres. Tax exemption. Tax exemption. They call on county, you do it on the Now, caveat to that. Here's one way you can do that exemption. Right. Speed. 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 Now, here's another question. Don't like to be the big king. Uh, so, I go back and look at it. It's going to be a while. Yeah. But it's based on how much money you did. It's going to be nice for you know, I want to say five acres. It could be wrong. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, there you go. So, you know what I mean, right? So, you have to look at it. So, that's why I say don't, uh, I'll go back. So, but when you think of ag rural urban, don't think ag is just those are just specific types of land. And then it's changing so much in the landscape. Like, I haven't seen a corner of It's the only time. It's the and it's right next to um, the town plan that we had in the okay. district. And there's a the whole development, but it's zoned ag. And you cannot, it's like a house, you can't put it into your town. You can't, you're not allowed to build a house in your town. So is that for planning to go in a salon, or is that just to get that ag um, No, it's for planning to go in a salon, but it's part of the fight. It's in that town, right? Right. But it's part, it has to. Um, align whatever is built there has to align with the Collin County Outer Loop overlay. Uh -huh. That's the sales tax refund. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Moving forward. Yeah, because there's a the right way. There, for, for future. For future. And then it's, it, there's, there's, I think a lot of, it's the legal landscape is changing as much as today. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it's going to be very specific yep. to what you're selling or buying. Yep. Like for your point, and when I when I will share it from what I've learned along the way, um, in my short period of, of, of learning about land with this particular property, a lot of people did not know. You know, like they just the information is on the MLS. I have everything is made back to me. And sometimes people are like, okay, well, I just want to put a house. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. You, know, you can't buy this very point. Right. You know, and then. Do you put that 10 acres with beautiful pond for a million? No, it's at 2.8. Um, and I'm um, uh, It's okay. Um, this is a Here, do you want to do it? Yeah. They want to buy it, just hold it. Yeah. And they'll have it. Yeah. For that. Uh, there's a lot of things you can put on there, but there's a lot that you can not. Yeah. And, and it can't be paid for it. You know, it can't be paid for it. It can be one of the integrity of the network. Yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. That was my question about the way that you work. How do you change from one dimension to the other? So, yeah, so zoning is different than an ag extension. And then land use is going to be different. You go to ag and zone. Land is going to be different. So, you call the difference on these two things the rural, um, call it the different. So, they are designated by zoning, or who gives them that designation? So, it's very different. So, let's. Um, I don't know. Back here. Yeah. Okay. So take this out of the equation. Like, what do you talk about? Agri okay. Typically, these are not never in the city, but typically never in the city. Okay. So then, what ends up happening for zoning is the city takes it into the EPJ and brings that into the into the city limits. And then they have to pay in the zoning, and that was pretty static. Now, if that's again, take this out of the equation for a second, 
You can have ag land, land that was specifically for cattle. You know, there's been farm for that was what we call the ag land at Bristol. You would take that and send it to the limit to go to and zoning. And it's a very not quick, but it's not simple. Uh, they get from that type of zoning. So when you're in the county and you're trying to change, you're not so much going to change the zoning of the county, it's not going to be zoning law, right? In the county. But if you're trying to take certain things, let's say you want to take 100 acres, you want to make 100 one acre lots, you have to go to the county commission report. And that's just like one of the county laws. That makes sense. So you could, you could have ag land in rural combined in the county. It's when they become part of the city or the city in the, in the city, then you're looking at one and zoning to change the process. So basically, when you're the one who's on the one kind of land you have, you kind of figure it out if it's an agriculture or rural system that you say how and where to do it and what exactly they do with them. And that's because the county says that or says it's basically they're not in the city but the city claims it and that any time in the future they still have they brought it in and put a building on it and they and I, I mean, and something like that, you know, even if it's coming, um, I would, I would recommend people look at it. Recommend my daughter is to go ahead and let the kids just know and ask them so many things to go like this. Right. Because the minute we do that, my house is going to go up and away. And we'll cover that as well. If I kind of all uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. What happens is a lot of other. No residents. People lived there for 20, 30 years and were not part of the city. The city came in, put the zone right. on them, and then they began to they can change that and kind of help. And I'll cover your, if you were trying to touch on uh, what the use of that property, I'll touch on that. Right. When we look at how we sell land from A to C, I'll cover that. So, market analysis, right? So, who here does the property, right? So, if you're in my farm, I do the same thing. Uh, there's a house. Mm -hmm. Very, I'm not saying you make are easy, but you have comparables, right? Land, that's a land. So, land isn't sitting there going, well, I have five acres here, I need to buy another five acres. So, when we do our CMAs, first thing we do is what size and budget. What are we using? This for, right? So, when we're looking at taking 180 acres, we're taking that down to nine 20 acre tracks. We're going to look at other three acre tracks made by the city of the newer subdivisions for water. Typically, we start at 180 days, one to three miles out, and then we look for similar characteristics. That's our starting base. Nine times out of 10, I'll put five miles in. And you're just not going to wait. I'll go up to five, uh, five miles out, and that's what we do. Some appraisers that I've worked with, I have, I've actually so we do get a lot of all. Because we do so much land, we have a page of calling K, what did this sell for? Some of the characteristics. I built that arc for people I can reach out to. There are pages out there sometimes that go up 10 miles. Well, if you don't have anything. Exactly. So, you do, but even so, even the farm credit unions the, and the people that are in the credit, they are the ones that know that you can't typically always have the exact same by the Half a mile that sold by, by the house. So those are all have now when they do go just that side note, if we go out that far, we do a market adjustment, right? Because what the market was last year, even for land, it's not what it is right now. We've seen that. We've had a decrease in price per acre. We don't have that high as demand in the past. It's starting to pick back up and still okay. <laughs> but your market analysis when you do land, I don't want you to, and this is going to be high level, we can go, I can spend hours just on market analysis of land. Take it out of your head that you have to buy something that's close and sell the last thing. Okay? You can go out, probably not do, 
So y'all know the closest and most repairable any property is before the land gets past the house. Doesn't matter if you plan, doesn't matter if it's a house. We know that, right? It's all good. But you know, it's fine. But then we also take things into account. And this goes in our pitfalls I'll talk about here in a minute. Is we also want to look for similar characteristics to that land. If it floods, we're trying to find other land that floods. Prime example, we just sold uh, 167 acres, closed it Thursday, last week. And I think we were, I think on market, we're about 130 sold it for just shy of that. Nine years. You want to talk about time on repairs? <laughs> that was a nightmare. But what happens though, and this is goes into some of the sites that we do, we do a plan of repair, but it's not everything on the others on the list of the sites that we use. But yeah, I think a lot of just sitting down and buying other properties that flood that are just as large as I've sold recently. A whole lot of different. But we did, right? So if it floods, we're trying to find land that floods. If it has five lines, we're trying to find land that floods. Each one of those will make a uh, market analysis adjustment based on that. So if I have 20 pristine acres, heavily wooded, two ponds, I have 20 acres of the trees, one pond, I like, and 80% of the floods, it gets the same value as other things. That's what trips people up. That alone, when I have people call me, uh, and I think in my phone, we've had this discussion in the that alone changes the whole ball. So when I say we want to find what similar characteristics means, if it's floods, floods, we talk about success. I find you that. If it doesn't, it's not a hard fetch rule. I usually deduct 15 to 20 percent from what about market analysis. Because the end buyer, your pool went from 100 percent of buyers to maybe. Because not everybody can look past the land floods. Not everybody can look past the gas pipeline that's in the back of the property along the property line. And we're having to worry about, but for some reason in their head, there's a pipeline there. And that's okay. Yes, ma'am. You might go over this later. Um, does having electrical out there and like uh, water to the property? I mean, obviously, it has value, but it's not dollar for dollar, I would think. It's not dollar for dollar, but it makes it um, more marketable, mm -hmm. and your buyer will just increase. So, a few years ago, most of the electric companies gave you X amount of heat for free. Usually, it's like 500000 So, now they charge it. From that pole to where it draws, they're charging. Okay? I haven't looked at the prices, but it's not cheap as a way. Same thing with water. If there is water available, this goes back to the CMA, which is similar characteristics. We have water, look for places that we have well, look for places that have wood. Those little small items make it more marketable and increases your fire. It can increase your, your per acre here, per acre. Do you have an approximate percentage of methane? Yeah, I'd say I usually have charts about 15, 20 percent. So. Now, that's a whole different ballgame when you have a seller who is running a brand new line. It may not be cost effective for them to run and pay six figures for the next two minutes to the water line just for 50 years. That's when you go, it's 50 acres, discount the price because I don't have water. Hey, Mr. Buyer, go ahead. Yeah. Around the seven eight hundred dollars, which you which is so at that end user, depending on its location, the developer the developer will get that cost because they're going to break that down to smaller tracks of land or lots. You hear me say lots and tracks a lot, and lots is less than 10 acre tracks, and it needs to go up. So, um, the end developer is something that they want to be the study on. And that's I'll talk about that's a whole that's a 10 page book that I think Mike is going to say out there about it here about ESAs. That's part of page one of these focus studies. Um, uh, and then um, it's it's I have to look at it. Shouldn't be messy, but I'll look at it. Okay. So, okay. Can you walk us through like some of the common 
tops, the most common things like what I'm going to lay in the pool, things I've learned. Areas and uh, the well on the dream miles, and we have over there. We have over there. We've got all the other things. Tell us, like, when you're looking at these, what are some of like, maybe like the top fives and seven or eights that are super key for the board? And how do you make those things? Yeah, that, you know, like the utilities to the place, you know, is it a flood zone? Is there a water thing on the property versus not? You know, where, how much you invest in these things? That, these are kind of the things I've learned in years past. Yeah, definitely. So, the first question is, which all the county is a great example. How many times do we use water? Grayson, Bitten, Van Hoon, right? Those are our four, four, I can't think of it. Four counties. Well, I, I, I lied. They don't count. But, <laughs> but as far as like when we're thinking rural, we're thinking land. Yes, there's some land in Dallas, but we're talking like that, right? So when you have that piece of land in Richard County and maybe a portion of Tennant County, one versus the other, unless they're unless they're crossing over major districts or school areas, there's not much of a crisis for people. That makes sense. So the difference would be is, for example, if it was in Collin County and the difference between what's the ISD and that also that that can have it's not so much the price per acre to per se, is the pool of buyers increase or decrease, right? Do you want to be in Van Alston ISD in Grayson County, or do you want to be in Melissa ISD, possibly Grayson County or Collin? Those will affect it a little bit. Um, it's more desirable and marketable. Um, then you go into, okay, well, what if you have to go out three miles, right? Again, I deal with this daily with Anna, Van Alston, and Melissa. What highway is it? 75. Who would agree that West 75 and East 75, two different markets? Y'all agree? Kind of two different markets, right? Uh, I mean, two of them on the west side, you have everybody else on the east side, especially if you're in an Anna. And Anna's own city has said that they're still trying to figure out how to put water on the east side, right? But they're building a lagoon on the west side. So when we have to divide, when we're looking at major intersection, that will play an effect. And we try our hardest to find that piece of land that's going to be on the right side of it. Side, east west, right? So if we can't, when we start seeing, okay, well, this 10 acre tract of land sold for 20,000 an acre, and this piece of land, let's say the mile of our, our piece of land is selling, but this one was sold for 15,000 an acre, we have to take that into consideration. Was it marketed correctly? Um, we go into, was there any characteristics of the land that uh, caused them to sell for less? And then if we can't come over from those, then to your point, it's like, okay, so what is my what is my price per acre? Because I'm on this side of 75, but I have this comparable over here. Half a mile away, it sold 60 days ago for $5,000 more per acre. That's called a mm -hmm. You, I, I, When I have some of those, I will price them in. Because at, my, at that point, it's a desire for someone really wanted to be on that side versus this side. And I hate to use that as a left or right or anything. Way. But that's how it is. Okay. When it comes down to 75, does so that kind of make sense? So when you go out, you have to look at it. You don't want to cost any major transactions. You don't want to go into different cities if at all possible. Um, because each city is going to have its own characteristics as far as the land goes. Now, when we're talking cities, we're talking rural cities. We're talking, oh gosh, my name's from like right, right, Tom B, Bell, uh, Savoy, Hector. Um, Tell Arts or Trenton. What was that? Tell uh, Yeah, I call Tell. I love the name of this thing. I, I, I just, because I love people from Tell, they're like, it's a tough name. I'm like, yeah, whatever. But so, you know, those are the cities what I mean, right? So you still want to try to stay as close as you can, but it's not always going to work. Um, and then from there, we just do the cost average. I mean, there's really, there's no other, no other way to do it other than just what is our average sold? What's the average point? And then we, we again we'll look at what are the repairs? What is what else sold uh that's similar to ours? Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's not real. So how are you adjusting for other major features? What would those major features come? So you know, every seller's a little different. Um, let's say that bond 
it may be five and fifteen thousand dollars. Right, because that's what it costs them. If, if a piece of land has no tank, you're wanting to put some sort of livestock out there near the tank. What's it going to cost someone to build a tank? And it's probably going to cost five or ten grand, but it's the implied value times it. They don't have to do it. So I've seen it work between five and ten thousand on, a, on, a, on a, farm. a tank that's huge, one, two, three, four, five acres. Obviously, then when you look, there's that's a whole different ballgame because we're selling 40 acres. 10 of that's on that ends up you know usability, but we do give a value to it. Um, not everybody's going to see its beauty, right? <laughs> They're going to go, Oh my god, the snakes, the birds, the bugs. Oh, we got to go off the of end. If you're worried about that, you got time to go look across. But even now, I mean, we live not too far from here, and I'll walk out my backyard and sell it. And I live in, I mean, literally straight out across the shelf. Sorry. We'll walk outside. So we're not going to be able to this far. Well, we're going to all find it. Um, so uh, we're in Robinson Ridge. So what's the Robinson Ridge like for us? And uh, Custer. And so where we're at on Bloomdale, Highland Lakes is putting forth your own development right behind us. Yeah, that was nothing but land. Went there and they're expanding all the yeah. dollars. And then the photos. That's all we should say. Uh, <laughs> so we go So anyway, does that make sense though? And you and I I still want to sit down with you and we will It's easier to show than it is to tell. Correct. Um, what other questions you have on the market house? These are great questions, by the way. What I'm about to what I'm about to show you what they look like they're crap. How much value do you put in the functionality of the lot shape? Oh, the, what? the lot shape yeah. depends on what's built. Great example would be if it's a ledge, then you can build on the front side, maybe five or ten percent less. If it's a really weird shape, which I've had those where it's like this and then back into like this, <laughs> this line, you're like. Let's say you got limited road frontage, so you, you carve out your premier ones in front, and then you have to do a couple flags. How much would you? Uh, I don't know. How much would you change on value? Flag lots are looking at probably ten to fifteen percent less. Now, some people will matter, but you got to think about it. If you're five hundred feet down, and your average rock top starts in foot per linear foot, think about how much five hundred feet is going to cost you plus the plus the plus the water line, unless they do well. But then, depending on because uh, I asked Michael, he called me, he gets asked for a simple question, I don't know later. Um, <laughs> the well, you're, you're looking at 20, 30, 40, upward to 70 foot, seven dollars per foot. I've had wells that had to be that 2,000 feet. Think about the cost of that well. We had to drop the price of that land substantially, even though there was a water line in the well. But the city went well on the upgrade and I say paid hundred thousand dollars for this well. Those are the pitfalls. That's why I said that was scary. Does that make sense though? So when you're looking at the development piece of it, your odd lots are going to have a less per acre than your prime lots. So if you're looking at a 2,000 stretch of land, and let's say you're doing 500 tracks, you're doing 200 foot road front and 100 foot road front and gallery, you're going to have a prime price per acre. But if you get it further down and then it's all tree line, you don't have an acre of buildability, that's going to change the price. Right? Like, you know, state roads, they limit you based on five acres. Maybe you know, 200 feet per acre, center line, line, center line. So, you see my post about, about investments. So, it, it, when it comes down to odd shapes, it's going to be priceless. Flag well, lots are typically priceless just because of the odd and stuff. Now, flag lots still check for counties and counties don't allow that. That's other different idea. Yeah. Yes, sir. So like the couple things that are just like I'm out, like everybody's just out <laughs> and not doing it. What do you mean? I don't know. Just some characteristics about the land. So there so okay, so who would care would agree there's a house for every buyer? Right. Okay. And every house has a buyer. Doesn't matter if the walls are feet, doesn't matter if the walls are 400 square feet. Same thing with land. 
Every piece of land has a buyer, and every buyer has a buyer. What happens is you go from 100 buyers to five, and you pray to God at one of those five minutes, and they fall apart. Mm -hmm. That's when it gets difficult with those five pieces of land. And I've sold them pretty obvious. Life's weird. <laughs> it took a while. Any other questions before we move on? Well, yes, when you have, uh, for example, a residential, you have a new development, residential development, and then you have something really close to it, and they have septic. I understand a new development uh, for residential, they have extra capacity on the store. <laughs> so, would that be available to the neighboring property? Who are not part of the development, but they might be because right now they're on the special chain. But in the future, would that be the case for anybody else to tap into a for pay speaking? But if it is or if it is not allowed, uh, they want to say they should by design, they should have that capacity. They should, but you got to remember when a subdivision puts in water, sewer, and everything else, that sewer design is based on their subdivision, right? Okay. That subdivision and the developers are the ones that technically are paying for that improvement. So anybody that wants to tap into it has to go to the city and to the water department say, can we tap into it? And if they say yes, whoever owns it, that land is the one that incurs that cost okay. to, to, to bring that sewer from wherever it stops to their house. It is usable and it is permissible and it can be allowed. It's not something. A uh, prime example would be Dior Word and Express Homes in mm -hmm. Most all that was rural. Most all that has set it. Um, someone bought some land, they developed it. They went to the developer, I think Dior Word and them, and said, hey, this can do this in the city. So they said, yes, we do this. But you have to have a pump stream. That's probably um, like it's a specific style of pump for, for the sewer to be put down. So, and they were able to do it. Now, is that the case for every city and every jurisdiction? Again, it's one of those things they have work and, and it's so hard. And would it be better when the development takes place or in time after? No. Okay. So if you have land that's possibly some set that it's going to be developed, they're in the piece. So let's say you have prime example. This, you know, this land is not on set right. this land is going to be developed right right now. Is it going to be happening right now? If you can't think about it, you go to the developer one of the cities and that's what you have to do. What will be the cost there? Yes. So your expertise in land is which area is now? Everywhere. Everywhere. So I'm actually in seven separate MLSs from here all the way down to the southeast. Oh, I'm, in, okay. I'm in Austin, Calais Station, Austin, <laughs> San Antonio, Houston, and here. I want to refer to you. Yes. No, I should say, you do talk French, and they're just tough to deal with. I'd rather be part of Longview than I would. We're not doing much in East Texas right now, and most of East Texas will put in the But you're not going to be able to get the agents that are in each are not here to see the property, the buyer and buyer oh, are going to have to see you. Right. I don't think Yeah, yeah, this it's all right. So pitfalls. All right. Let me see where is it at? Um this one. Remember I said close on this? Yeah. This is where we're going to start doing. So, this was on 151,000 acres, 167 acres, 98% of the square. We got on contract for four years. They did a great trade. Yeah. Well, they did a phase one impact. First, first thing that came up, I got three pages of extensions. 19 objections to the all oil and gas related. We got over that, moved past it, and came to turn. Phase one study came back with a 320 page turn. This little bitty piece right over here, right here, filled up on the, I'm recording today, but mm -hmm. you see what that picture looks like? Mm -hmm. What do you think they were doing out there? They were digging. Previous to my cellar, right? Guess what they did? They showed wetlands. So, wetlands is 
in the tracks one on one long term long story short it's to protect the land and you have to do with pipe rust because just you know, soil conservation like how the water is rising deep falls they can come down to certain species of wildlife but it's typically plant it's usually a plant there it's protected it's okay so we get a report back and see what no way okay It gets better. So while we're dealing with the wetlands, the gas management company comes out and goes, oh, you know, it's a huge. So if you can see right over my finger that this is a little road that goes to here. There's a gas pipeline that's right over here. Process over here. That building comes up this way. Person that was digging dug within two feet of a 24 inch high pressure natural gas pipeline. He was up. Oh, he was lucky. I was lucky. But we found out they didn't find it. He did it on the spot. I'm either called eight, eight, eight. Look what he did. Um, that's just this one property. But we only came. We knew who to call. Called up on the plant here. We got the wetlands. Last Tuesday, a lot of rain. What, 40 something degrees? I was out there. It's on my plane. The uh, pipeline people came out and looked at it and said, okay, you know what it is? It's gonna cost about 30 grand. We did that's the whole back. We closed, we should be done in the next two weeks. So it is just not. So it is. So that's the whole back. That's his land and damaged it and not the problem. So if you're in the contract already, you know that you're not. So I came up there and no leads. Okay, so there's that. So that works. They stopped the construction and then when the leads are being flashed out, it's not a white spider. Oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I don't have to go here, but we can use land. 20 acres. Jones, Jones Town, right outside of Lago Vista, and Travis County. Ever heard of the Golden Cheek Wobbler? Right. Golden Cheek Wobbler. Yeah. A couple of acres out of the 30 acres was in the Golden Cheek Wobbler conservation. Pretty close. Got all the conservation. They said we would replant it. There's five in the 90s. So that's okay. Your buyer only has to pay $10,000. We got it closed. <laughs> Three years I've ever heard of Houston Toby. You know, in Bassett County, they're mating season. You're not supposed to do any construction work if you're in a Houston Toby conservation area. <laughs> but Houston Toby, and it's not even a Houston, you put it in Cage, Bassett County, and you're throwing it. Not Houston, that's way, you know, 200 miles away. So I want to share this with you because when you look at me, you have this program. Oh, Natalie. Natalie is a great example with her land and the way it's sown. These are some of the pitfalls that come up with land. If you're developing land, you can deal with the county commissioner that makes up their own rules and you really don't want to push them too hard because if you ever want to develop anything again, you have to be friends with them. They got to get reelected too. Huh? They got to get reelected. That too. Yeah, so, um, and they also friendly with each other. And it's a city type of stuff. And um, I mean, in Salina, if you can actually go in there and talk to them, um, they'll give you the email and they can I don't you know everybody is there and I have a question whether it's that one or not. It's really nice to know that. They, have, uh, they also share with me, they're like, if you're but if, the, if there's a bias word, it's still the one to want to do a proposal to change the zoning. Here's an example of the people that own land across from you. They did this proposal, and you can basically change the line. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, the most, the most of the factors, they are working on that. Um, but some of the pitfalls we're going to run into, and those are some of the extremes right there. But some of the pitfalls we're going to run into, there's a gas in pipeline. Maybe the pump check out, because we sort of think that. I dealt with what that either the baby thing that do rule or two. Uh, I had a group of property that had a seller. Some of 
property that was all that hair came to people over. They never get moved. They still the same spot they were probably five years ago. Okay. When it comes to land, um, I think uh, you were asking about this is where the pit boss is going to buy high You have to know who your empire is. So the guy who bought this 167 acre, it's a recreational community. Comes with cattle out there. Just so happened that the piece of land he bought, there's a piece of land in the middle. He owns the one, another couple hundred acres on the other side. My job now is to figure out who the hell the guy in the middle is and sell him the rest of the land. So he wants it. But that's what your end buyer is. This is another property that we have here. This is in Elgin. Um, this is the road right here where this P is, is the road that curves. This is the property we're selling. Look at the easement. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. This comes down to what you're saying. Like, what is if this, these here were down here on the main road, totally different price per acre. We have to take those into account. I've sold land in Trent. No, it's not this one, but I'll give you an example. This was 50 acres here, 30 acres on top. No prescribing. <laughs> Landmark, right? That's where it comes down to knowing where to look. This is going more of an unusual of it. I don't want to go too deep into it. I had to go out and find all those records. I can find out in 1973. I'm going to say back then, it was called a prescription. Basically, go where the hell you want to get your land. Well, at the same time, this, use this as an example, this 50 acres was on the market. The agent who sold the guy didn't tell him, you have an easement. Who got to be the guy that calls? I did. Who got to see? Nobody. Huh? It's all filed and legal. The guy who bought the 30 acres had legal access. The guy who bought the 50 acres didn't have an option, other than taking someone to court. <laughs> but that's not that's not my head. He couldn't, but I doubt he did. Now, did he go after his buyer's agent? Good. I wanted to show you this because if you work with the, especially on the buyer side, if you don't know everything about that piece of land, it will come back first. So how do you find out everything about it? Well, yeah, never like me. <laughs> now, get out there. Huh? So, if you're going up. No, there are only so much. So, it, it does come down to, um, okay. So, typically, when we open, like, most of the time, I should say most of the time. So, what I, I'll give you an example of what I do. And hopefully, it's going to answer this question. Russell, this is what we're talking about the job site. So, how I, so right now, I have over 60 activities. Last year, I sold over 120 pieces of land. Previous to that, I sold over 100. How the hell do I do that, right? So I work with guys that are going out, like you, buying large tracks, making them smaller. One thing I require my investors to do is send me the title work from the coach. Because that title work, even though it's not for each individual lot, it's for that whole property. And then I'm digging into are there any file easements? Are there any file um, full of path gap pipeline stuff? Which, by the way, not everything that seems is required to be. On schedule B. So you may have a jack out there and a pile of that. Please release. That's for the real information. That's what I'm saying. Wouldn't the easement have been in the title? No. No. Not always. Not always. And sometimes they own the water well that yep. they're on that property, too. Not the landowner. Yeah. And, and that's where you just come down to digging. I mean, you literally have to. I most every piece of land, except for maybe one or two, I've physically done that. I have physically driven that. Who are the experts in that? Do you go to like a land man? Yeah, I just call the land man. Now, I didn't name myself a land man, but I'm not a land man. Land man charges between 400 to 800 an hour. They physically go to the courthouse and sit down with documents that are in this. They're living with documents beyond me. And they will tell you exactly what it is. Because at some point or another, something was. So when I said I'm going to scare you, it's not that things carry. It's just these are things you have to have. So how do you look at the circumstances? So I'll share these with you. Anyone that's over there? Okay. All right. Fun stuff. This is just a small amount of those One of them, obviously, you know, you have to save your fat, your tags. You have to save those. You haven't ever saved them on your computer. You have to have these with it. From there, I'll put them on. Right, we all, we all access it. And from there, we use map. So 
and I'll explain why we use map right here in a second. And then the other one we use is called Lands of America. So Lands of America is what we do most for advertising, but we also will be careful that up front because again, there are farms are being sold that are on the most. What is that? Oh, uh, so not everything that's being sold is necessarily on the Private seller or some of our larger land brokers out there, they don't necessarily put on the list. They don't. Okay. So, why do I use these? Because I promise I'm going to tell you how I do it. First thing I do, go to map right. Why I go to map right is I pull up that piece of land. I want to, first thing I do is I look at the flood, pipeline, I look at the windmills, I look at the railroad tracks, I look at the city, city substation. Okay, you don't pay the town, huh? You don't pay the town. It is so we want to create maps. It's probably like 60 bucks a month. I create I don't know, 40 percent maps out of it. So that's the very first thing that I do. That's a seven minute okay. So that's the very first thing that I do. From there, okay, not every piece of land has an address, right? How do I find a comparable to my schools? My house, yes. I use that address to put that as an OS, and I start my search. One to three miles. Next thing I do from that point is I narrow down my acres. It's 20 acres, I'll work 15 to about 30, 35. Right? I still have a comparable. I want it under an acreage. I go to the map. I don't go to the, I don't go to the comparables first. I go to the map. I want to see where they're at. And this was your point. So, like, if you're right here, 75 right here, you have three pieces of land on this side and six pieces of land on this side. What do you use? You use the ones on this side first. And then flip over to the other side because you have a major division where you're going to two different cities, et cetera. Okay, so there's that. Now, if I can't find anything, I think my radius and I expand or expand my radius. If I still can't find anything, I flip back over to those 360 degrees. While I'm doing that, I have Land of America pulled up. I have Land of America pulled up, I'm doing a comparable analysis there. So I'm saying, okay, these are in the less. These are in MLS and there's five or six others that do not. And I take all that information together and I price it out based on characteristics, similarities. And again, I start with if I can truly find a 20 acre piece of land and another 20 acre piece of land, closest and most comparable to everything that I've already said, that's my decision. But at this point, most of them, not the one. So from there, we do a quick CMA. I'm looking at what I'm looking at at this point. So I'm not just looking at sold. I'm looking at active, pending, and sold. The reason I'm looking at active is because my sold data says, by all counts and measures, the average price per acre is at 15,000 an acre, and the average days is 97. Then I'm gonna look at the average, then I'm looking at the active. Are they in line with what the sold have sold for? Are they asking too much or too little? And then I'm looking at what's the price per acre and how many days on market there. Not me being me. I'm not going to look at the listing. Not that I think I'm listing. It has one picture of the data outline and then that's it. And then I'm like, if that, if that, right? Now I will be the first to tell you we do have a couple pieces of land. That's all I have is the of fire drop. It's like, it's not up there now. We have a piece of land that has it. And it was real close to people walk by two years straight down. I'm like, you're like, uh, yeah, we're good. Um, but that's kind of how I price out our properties. I have multiple systems open. I go back to that right because in, you're going to see these here, which is um, public utility commission and railroad. The reason that map right that I'm looking for pipelines, I'm looking for water districts, I'm looking at water wells. Is because then I need to know, am I going to go to the railroad commission side to find out what type of pipeline it is? Has it been packed? Is it productive? Is it currently produced? Because then I can get who the owner's information is. If we can't find a title, then we're reaching out with a roll number, or not a roll number, but a uh, lease number. They can pull it in their files and see it. That makes sense. So a house will typically have an OS pulled open. That looks good. That looks good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. We're done. Yeah, no, that's about half a I can get it down to about 20 minutes, depending on the piece of land. Most of the time, it's a 30 to 40 minute process per piece. So, any of that help? Yes. 
Yes. Thank you. Okay, who's all that? Who all wants to tackle him? I'll tell a good person to tell you. You know, it's 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 lucrative. I was told I'm not kidding on I love I started with KW and I love my KW friends. I have some great people that still have KW. I really do, but I actually have KW production for some of these things. I'm still twenty two million dollars. There is money to be made as a book for you. But you have to have the wherewithal to have a new mindset of it's not as easy as I thought it was. Which is it ain't as easy as it was. Hey Jason, you have to pick you have to pick whether hey, I want to do lands and really dive into that and focus 50%, 75% of my time or residential. You want me to give you the state answer or my answer? Here's my answer is not really. State answer is you have to be confident in what you're doing. Track Capstar is cracking down on people that are trying to do commercial that are residential agents. Track's finding out and it's for something up, that's what happened. Land, you can do a residential. But as if your land business grows, you will find it does take more time. And so you may find that it's residential. Start going to residential. That's what happened to me. I mean, we just listed a house in Melissa. I uh, contacted for days, multiple offers, but those are one offs. Those are people that call me for in this particular case. The court called me and said, You got to let people mediate. What's the trouble? Funny. Perfect. Too much to start now to do two lanes. I'm not an 18, but nobody else in the world. How would you really be starting? But if you have all the knowledge, you have it. Just don't have the connection and you just don't, don't have the results. What would you go to start doing? Where's the hat? Right here. <laughs> I bet you did this. And we say, why? You want to go to the practical reason. We say, why? Because you can go on the green line and find out who doesn't live here, who owns that land, and then go to them. We ever thought about capitalizing on the current market and liquidating that thing as a property. That's one of the first steps. So it's just going to go on to the more questions for us. It doesn't matter. You can still get the address. Even on a truck, you're going to have that property listed. I'll mail it to the central for tax purposes. Right? Now, something that I've done with investors in the past, I haven't done much now, is someone wants to buy a piece of land, I will actually have the investors find the contract to put my office. And that's what I'm learning. This is no guess. This is actually, I have a buyer on the Problem. We've actually sold pieces of land. There. There's a multitude of ways to get in the business. You just have to be and rules and grace. Who here wants to be my boss? Friends. Well, to your friends. Oh. Hey, Ryan. So, 2017, while I was building my land business, I started calling inspired. Just land, not residential, not commercial, just land. And I probably picked up a couple of land deals every single month. One of my best months was 14 weeks harvest. One of those was eight pieces of one thousand dollars. So there's, you know, the first step is if you don't want to expire, for example, get with Vicka and her, her, um, Joe, okay, his name. To learn things like green mining. How would you green mining farm? Right? How would you get in there and say, okay, I want to find my out of county, out of area, non resident owners of this thing and see if they want to have a new niche market? Hell, Salina, Prosper, Los Angeles County. I stay the hell away from Gunter because they don't need water. Um, hey, they were made to do that. Okay, you got four days left of water. Don't, don't drink anything. Um, I would look at Hal, I would look at um, Oscar to Anna, I would look at White Wright, I would look at Tom Bean, even though they're difficult right now, but look in the county. And I would just start calling big at Lando, reach out to them, send them a letter. I thought I mean, we're growing. I now is a hell of a bad time to liquidate that land. And Facebook. Get into the FW investigators. There's tons of them out there. Pay attention to look at them. 
Investors are hard to work with, but once you understand how investors work, that's why I love working with you because it comes out of it. Two, 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 two. Can you give me four bucks? Yes. Good. That's obviously we want to make more four bucks, but at the end of the day, it's an online solution. So that's your question. Yes. Yeah. Real quick question. Could you go a little bit over the restrictions? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Deep restrictions. Okay. Deep restrictions. Who goes to deep restrictions? Huh? Is that a forever? No. So, okay. So, what, I just want to kind of see change the change there. What, what people think about for no of deep restrictions. First of all, zoning, deep restrictions, two different things. Okay. First thing I'll always get from somebody, this is every time I have a tenant. This is the only first one you can do. Oh, well, what's the deep restrictions? So, the deep restrictions will, there's a couple different ways. There's perpetual, meaning they will always run with the land, meaning no matter what, that deep restriction is always there, no matter the land. Then there's deep restrictions, like I said, for time, five years or 10, 15 or 20. At the end of that expiration date, they either expire altogether, but sometimes they have what's called automatic removal for another tenant. So these restrictions vary from piece of property to piece of property. They can be as simple as no trash, no refuge, uh, no emergency use, and no debris. Simple as that. No hogs. No what? Hogs. Now, I have someone tell that no mama, no eating, hogs. You know, you have five chickens. You know, then you can enter the restrictions like systems. And this is why this is one I always love when I have developers that put these restrictions on buildings. 1500 square foot minimum, 25% masonry. But they don't define what masonry is. Mm -hmm. You know what our new siding is? It's a masonry box. It technically falls within masonry because it's a masonry box. So usually when we see those with developers, we go back from their page. If we find we see the deep restrictions, what do you mean by masonry? Oh, we're talking about bricks, stones, stuff like that. So you need to get that restriction stop from turning because you're opening yourself up for whoever wants to talk about masonry. Right. So um, but deep restrictions, they just vary from piece to piece. They vary from length to time. Do you put deep restrictions on yours? Yes. Build minimum size. Well, depends on the property, but generally that knows. Are the most you always see is just that. But if you don't, then you're right now. I will say this even with the restrictions, once you're out, meaning you're no longer a majority shareholder, or anything you can do, mm -hmm. you're going what? Need restrictions. <laughs> There's no one enforcing The only people that can enforce them are your neighbors. It means the neighbors have to get together and do the court. And then the court has to decide if you violate those things. And they decided that you violated the deed restrictions. Imagine this is the court order saying you violated it. They send that to the sheriff. Let's say this is another big pile of paper. There it goes right here. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> That's what an attorney told me. And it's not that it's not that deed restrictions aren't important because they are, but there is no governing HOA to dictate how the deed restrictions are. Hopefully, you are a buy zone or buy by them because they're spending. 50, 60, 70, 80, $100,000. And in some cases, $400,000 for a piece of land to go to house on. So you can imagine, someone spending that amount of money, you want everybody else out there they're going to do. Let's do Our cases, either drone, wash machines, or pot money, I think. <laughs> and a subdivision that had these things. No, no, I'm not and I haven't seen that one yet. That's pretty close. <laughs> Meth lab. Get <laughs> to check, check the back corners. No, no. Oh, well. Yeah. Got me. Got me. Got me. Marijuana. I've never heard of a guy. Yes, ma'am. I have not personally. I've had some of our, our previous um, buyers have to go after a neighbor or two because they really were bad, like they dump cars everywhere, literally walking in the front yard, pop in the back. Yeah. The only reason I asked is there was a lot, my clients were looking to raise rabbits and chickens. 
and we're looking at a lot here. Last one has been said. They uh, uh, family of women on um, sisters on um, July, and they were just kind of around it. And they had all these restrictions on what the you know the house came to look like, what they wanted, and it was just a lot of stuff that you usually you don't see on these trips. It was real personal. They wanted everything to look like what their property was supposed to be, but it was in the middle of their property. And I'm like, that's gonna be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this is kind of how when the big restrictions were created, if they ever expired, they can do and report to them. And they would actually, this is subject to that piece of land. I've actually seen big restrictions of other piece of land that when you dive into where that piece of land was, actually because of that big restriction, somehow it's because of its location. Even though we think it may, I've seen where it is. And that's where it's starting. How do you find the like I said, but along the way, everybody has to be able to get a stream of the zoning to get the application. The CP wouldn't let them change it because they want residential ages low density and uh one family home but the largest is the one acre top everybody who came there are investors in the city capital so uh by this uh, the lady is the golden even if the neighbors get all together and start seeing the designation then i'm not going to go get into them because that means a lot of people scatter whatever they want but yeah. even investors will come and buy the whole the land before the property that might be easier to do. Which technically is probably at least if you want to go probably in that physical location, it would be convincible to sell. So you said at the beginning you didn't have to invest in something? <laughs> uh I have I mean I have I'm always been able to go on hey yeah 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 uh if the city be difficult with rezoning, you have to not find the clients to zone, but in the idea of somebody would like to, because even sometimes you'll go to an investor in land, especially they have to buy it away for about five years. We're not going right now to buy it. They just wait for a while until so this, this, this particular location probably has to be bought by each until the okay. Yeah, that's a tough one without seeing it. You know, um, I would say send it over and yeah. call me on it. Yeah. 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 We'll probably bring Jason back. It's uh, if I got enough of this stuff. Uh, tomorrow, yeah, uh, he will be. Tomorrow will be a capital title of legacy, like uh, the Willow and the Willow Bin. Parking Park Oh, yeah, Park and 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 Park and